Select the title, and right now the font is the default font size, which is size 11, and because it's a title, you want it to stand out, so you want it larger. In, on the Home tab, there's a group called Styles, and you'll select Title, and it does make it a larger font size. Then select the heading on the left-hand side, Application Developer, and then we want this a little bit larger, not just in bold. Right now it's just size 11, like the rest of the font. So in the Styles group, choose Heading 1, and it does make it a little bit larger, size 16, and it did change the, co the color of the font. It's blue accent one and darker, 25%. Now there's a total of nine side headings, so that's our first one. So scroll down to Business Analyst and choose Heading 1, and then continue to scroll down. Now you don't have to actually select it. As long as you're on the line that you want it, you can choose Heading 1, and it does it to the entire line that you're on. And do, keep doing the same thing until all the side headings have the Heading 1 style. One more. Good. So all nine of them have it. Control Home to go back to the top and click anywhere in the first paragraph. And if you wanted to see what the spacing was, if you click in the paragraph group, there's a, bu a button called Dialog Box Launcher, and it'll indicate that you have first line indent where it's tabbed in, only a half inch, and the line spacing we changed it to that 1.15. So go ahead and click OK or cancel. It doesn't matter. So if you were to scroll down to the rest of the document, we had it in um, double space. So we only changed the first three paragraphs to the 1.15. What happens if you want to change everything else to that um, 1.15 instead of 2? So anywhere in this paragraph, if you go up to normal and right click, you can just choose update normal to match. So all the other normal text will match this one. So if I go ahead and check, it changed every all of them to that paragraph spacing, first line indent half inch, and the spacing 1.15. The other thing it did is it also indented the side headings, and we actually don't want that um, indented. We want it at the left margin. So another way you could do it is we'll go to heading, but we'll right click and choose modify. And then we're, um, we have set based on, here's our heading, style one. I'm going to choose no style. And it's going to do it to the one that I was on and all of the rest of the side headings. All nine of them brought them back to the left margin. So we did that to heading one. Also do it to title. So if you right click on title, choose modify. And then again, with the style based on, choose no style and OK. And it brings it to the left margin. Now we'll select the title, and we want this to stand out a little bit more. So we're going to increase the size just one click for the font size increase. And then we'll also change the font color to that blue accent one, darker 25%. And then go into the line and paragraph spacing and choose add space after paragraph, so you have that more of a gap between the title and the first paragraph. Great. Now scroll down to the um, where you can see the bottom of page one and the beginning of page two, and you really would rather have customer service manager moved to the beginning of the second page instead of separating it. So click so that you're to the left of customer service manager. Click the layout tab choose the breaks and it has the um, down arrow so that means there's more options and choose page and what you've done is you've created a page break so it forces customer service manager to begin on the next line so now we'll scroll down to see how this ends up um, finishing same thing intelligence analyst we really want to have that on the next page so this is another way you can do it so go to the left of intelligence uh, analyst and again you could choose layout breaks and page or uh, the shortcut is holding control on the keyboard and press enter. And that does the same thing, it's a page break. So we're gonna go back to control home and we're going to add a page number. So choose insert and then hover over to page number and again it has that down arrow so there's more options. 
and we want it to appear on the bottom of the page. So go ahead and select that carefully because these move all the time. Scroll over to the different styles that are available. And the one we're going to choose is called plane number two. And right now you're in what's called the footer part of the document and you could close uh, um, the header and footer so you go back to the document. Notice the document is faded out because you're active in the footer. You can also, if you don't click the red X to close out a header and footer, if you double click anywhere in the document, it brings you back to the document and the footer is faded out. So we'll control home and then we'll click view and we'll choose multiple pages. And you may have to unclose the thesaurus. We don't need that anymore. If you click the minus sign once, you should get all three pages. And you can see the changes you made with your page break so that everything falls nicely within the three pages. Go ahead and choose uh, page width so it goes back to a larger um, screen. And then we'll choose insert. And we're going to go to header this time. And you can look at the different styles, some fancy ones, but we're going to go with blank. And again, it takes us, the, the document is faded out and we're in the header section and we're going to type up. Uh, so you just type the header title, career growth in the tech, tech sector. And if you were to scroll, it will be appearing on all of the pages in the header, just like the numbers appearing on all the pages in the footer. So what we're going to do now is select the title, but be careful, don't select the paragraph symbol. Don't, don't select that. Go back to home. Now, because our most recent font was the blue accent 125%, all you have to do is click it and it'll put it in that same color. And then we'll also click center for the paragraph alignment. And then what we want to do is add a bottom border. So just deselect, take that off so it's not selected and then choose the down arrow for borders and choose bottom border so it goes across the whole page. If you were to keep the text selected, you would have a box around that, so you don't want that. Uh, go back to, right now I'm in the Home tab. If I want to go back to my header and footer tools, design tab I have to actually click the design so the ribbon changes and now I want to go to footer so there's an option go to footer and we're going to select that page number one that we have on the bottom and we'll change that also to the font color blue accent one uh, 25 percent and then click anywhere to deselect it. And we're going to close the header and footer. And right now you don't have that close button, but if you click design, there it is. Or again, if you just double click in the document, it closes the header and footer. And then if you control home, you'll notice that you have the title and the, um, the bottom border, and it's on all of the pages. But really the first page of a report or um, a research paper shouldn't have the header or the footer on it. So to remove it on this page, but keep it on the rest, you'll go back to insert. And then you'll click. Uh, so if you um, press control home, it took you to the first page to make the header active, just double click in there and it turns it on. And then you're going to click different first page and it'll take it off of the first page. Mine had a little delay and it will remain. There's the footer also off the first page, but it's back on the second. So is the footer and the third. And then you can close out. If you want, you can turn the show hide button off. The next thing we're going to work with is what's called footnotes. They're also um, called endnotes. Footnotes or endnotes are an added explanation of a certain topic that you want the reader to refer to right away. They're different from citations. Citations are where you're taking um, specific quotes or information from uh, either a website or a textbook, but footnotes are just an added um, 
comment that you want the, the reader to know. So if you scroll down to the bottom of page one on the paragraph that has business analysis, you're going to click after the word demand. Click the reference tab and careful, we're not doing a citation, it's an insert footnote. If you did it correctly, there should be a raised one at, immediately after demand. You have a dividing or separator line and the one matches and you're going to type a, a small sentence. So they were briefly talking about a business analyst position. So the footnote is referring to this position is also known as mobile applications developer. So you just type that sentence in there and we'll do another footnote. Scroll up and we're actually gonna put it right after the side heading applications developer. And again, it'll be insert footnote. And it, um, what happens is because it was before the one for demand, that one becomes one and demand becomes two. So it's automatically numbering them in the correct order that they fall. So I just wanted to show that I actually put in the wrong footnote for the demand. It should be this position is also called, um, this is actually number one goes with applications developer and job growth is strong in Seattle, Austin, and Boston, really should have been for demand. So hopefully you, you cut this from the book where I missed it. Our third one, which goes after professions, and what's gonna happen is that's gonna be number two. So this one will stay the same. The job growth one will be the third one. So go ahead and choose insert footnote. See how they, um, they change the numbers. So hopefully um, you have the correct order with one after applications developer, two after professions, and three after demand. The key is make sure the content for each uh, matches what was in the in the ebook or the textbook if you have the loose leaf, but this is what should fall. So that was my error, I apologize. So what we're gonna do is change, instead of having numbering, maybe change it to letters. So what you would do is you go up to the um, the reference uh, ribbon and then you have footnotes there's that launcher so go ahead and click that and then right now it's the number format is one two three so you could choose something different we'll choose ABC and then click apply so instead of numbering their letter then they decide you know what let's go back to numbers so go ahead and either control Z or undo and it goes back to the numbers this is the book it wasn't me uh, so we, we went back to um, numbers. Control home, that takes us back to the beginning. And if you want to go through your footnotes, what you would do is click next footnote, and it takes you to that very first one. And then you'll click next footnote again. And it stops at the second one. And they actually want you to delete this one. So if you press delete once, it'll select the two. If you press delete again, it get, gets rid of it completely. So all that, and we're back to just two footnotes. So control home, and that gets you to the top of the document. And now we're gonna work with citations. They want you to increase the size um, to 120. So if you wanna just change it a little bit, you can keep it wherever you have it, it's just so that you can see clearly. So what you're gonna do is first change your style. This is not going to be in the APA style for the social sciences, um, and it's an academic report, so we'll do it as an MLA 7th edition. So make sure you change that first. So before we start the citation, the only thing we changed was the MLA style. I'm going to stop here and we'll finish up with just a little bit left for this in part three. So we'll finish the citations in part three.